So how should a business owner go about selecting the technology stack, the platforms that they're going to use for their membership sites? Well, first of all, you got to look at what it is that you need to accomplish first. Now, some people come up and try to build a really big site on some platform that they thought was a good idea before they really had enough of an understanding of what the course was going to be when they were done. They hadn't really done a lot of the market research that was required. And so they spent a lot of time building technology that slowed down their ability to learn what they needed to learn to launch a very good site. So I'm, I'm just going to set that aside. Now, for if what you want to do is just get a site up and running so that you can run a beta with some early content, you might be able to just get by with a private Facebook group. You communicate with people via the thread. You used uh, maybe a, a sticky post or a featured post for, um, you know, for publishing that. You might use the private Facebook groups. And now you're off to the races with the understanding that you didn't want to spend a lot of money and time at the beginning to beta things to test the content out. Now, when you go through something like that with real customers, you get a lot of feedback and it could be that people aren't that concerned about the platform. Now, you might be concerned about the platform because of some sort of long-term plan that you have. Now, once you understand that, then what you need to understand is, first of all, is a an off-the-shelf tool like Thinkific or Teachable or Kajabi a good solution? Uh, my team and I, we build a lot of uh, learn dash based sites. We use community features like Buddy Boss. Um, oftentimes, we're integrating with tools like Keep using Memberium, uh, sometimes with Access Ally. So that's a WordPress approach. Now, so, so that's our slant. However, the benefit of working with something like WordPress is that you have flexibility. It's a little harder to get started from the beginning compared to some of the other tools but you're never going to get to the point or it's rarely going to get to the point where I can't do this in this platform. What we have seen is people will pick, you know, and I'm just picking Kajabi, but it can, they pick Kajabi and all of a sudden they needed to add some feature that Kajabi just doesn't give you. Or, you know, they pick Teachable and they were wanting to do something more elaborate or they were wanting to combine, let's say, resources, which are more like, like a searchable posts in a WordPress site, and they had to almost like jam them into a course model in order for it to work, and then they didn't have the right searching tools, things like that. So <clears throat> I think it's critical for us to think about what it is that we need now. And again, you can get started with something very simple. Maybe you do get started with something that is a software as a service model because you're using it intentionally as a temporary stopgap to gather information so that you're not slowed down by, um, by too many technology issues. Uh, and then when you do have the information, then you can move forward uh, with more. But, you know, we've used LearnDash with Memberium and Keep many, many, many times for very simple projects. We're able to build those sites at reasonable costs. Um, the business owners are able to, um, you know, inherit and run the site themselves unassisted by anyone on the outside. And it's not even a serious stretch. It's just something that can be natural. But do make sure that you, you, know, you speak to someone who's knowledgeable in this area, someone that can help you select the right platform for you, and then can help you make the best of those so that when they're gone, assuming you want them gone, uh, you can run something and it supports you as you grow your business.